Hello, fifth and sixth grade. This is your science video for Thursday, April 22nd. You're going to be doing two work text pages, 179 and 180. And this one focuses on this one focuses on uh, 179 focuses on the lower respiratory system, and then you have a study guide there. Then tomorrow we'll be doing a little bit of a, an experiment, and uh, hopefully this experiment will uh, be something you guys can do fairly easily anyway. And uh, it may take uh, people working with somebody just because of the um, uh, because of the, what you have to do in order to do this. And so we'll see what happens. But it does involve balloons, as you can see. And I think that you guys will enjoy this particular experiment. No, you don't have to use the balloon somebody else has used. You'll each have your own. All right. And before you ask me, yes, you'll be able to keep the balloon afterward. Don't worry about that. Uh, however, if you're playing with it in class, then it will be thrown in the trash. So that's what you're not supposed to do. So hopefully you're watching this, you're listening, and you'll understand what the rules are. All right, so um, that is going to be uh, for tomorrow, but let's go ahead um, and talk about today's lesson and reading starting in 272. It says, your trachea and bronchi. Your respiratory system is divided into two parts. The nose, throat, and larynx make up the upper respiratory system. Below the larynx from the trachea into the lungs is the lower respiratory system. The trachea stretches from the larynx into the upper chest. It is about 10 to 11 centimeters or four inches long in most adults. The trachea branches off into two tubes called the bronchi. One tube goes to the left lung. The other tube enters the right lung. Both your trachea and your bronchi have C-shaped rings of cartilage on their outsides. The rings keep them from collapsing and allow them to move as if your neck or as your neck and chest move. If a piece of food gets past your epiglottis, the muscles in your trachea walls react. The muscles can squeeze the rings together and try to keep the food from going into your lungs. Just like in your nasal passages, the lining inside your trachea and bronchi have mucus and cilia. The mucus and cilia trap particles of dust and dirt. The particles are pushed back up to your throat and you usually swallow them down your esophagus. If you have ever coughed to clear your throat, you have experienced these particles moving out of your trachea. Your lungs are two sac-like organs that replace the carbon di dioxide in your blood with oxygen. A flexible cage of bones protects your lungs. This cage is formed by your ribs, breastbone, and backbone. The top of your lungs reach above your shoulder bones and is behind your collarbone. The base of your lungs rests on the diaphragm. Healthy lungs are a pinkish gray color. Each lung is about the size of a football. Your left lung is slightly smaller than your right lung. That is because your left lung has a space next to it for your heart. Your heart and main blood vessels are located between your lungs. Lungs do not have any muscles of their own. Instead, your diaphragm and chest muscles control how your lungs move. When you breathe in, your lungs stretch and fill with air. When you breathe out, air is pushed out of your lungs and they return to their smaller size. The amount of air that can be taken into the lungs with one breath is called lung capacity. A normal breath for an average man is about half a liter of air. Lungs can hold more air if necessary though. When a man breathes in as much air as possible, his lungs can hold about 6 liters or 6.4 quarts of, an, of air. A woman's lungs can hold about 4.2 liters or 4.5 quarts of air. Bronchial tubes. <clears throat> Inside your lungs, your bronchi branch off into many smaller bronchial tubes. These tubes get smaller and smaller as they spread to all parts of your lungs, all the parts of your lungs. Many of these tubes are less than one millimeter wide. Some are thinner than human hairs. All of the bronchial tubes, though, have muscles and rings of cartilage to keep them open wide. The smallest tubes are called bronchioles. Avioli. The bronchioles end in tiny air sacs called avioli. The avioli look like bunches of grapes. Each lung is about 300, has about 300 million avioli. They are surrounded by a network of tiny blood vessels called capillaries. The walls of the avioli and the capillaries are very thin. In some places, they are only one cell thick. It is in the avioli that the exchange of gases takes place. The air you inhale contains oxygen. The oxygen passes through the walls of the alveoli into the, bloods, uh, into the blood in the capillaries. The blood then carries it all to parts of your body, uh, to all the parts of your body. At the same time, carbon dioxide passes from the blood in the capillaries into the alveoli. There is carbon there, the carbon dioxide can be exhaled from your body. This exchange of gases is called breathing or respiration. Respiratory sounds, coughs, coughs and sneezes. Coughs and sneezes often occur when something irri irritates the lining of the airways. The force of the cough or sneeze moves the offending particles out of your, the respiratory system. 
When you cough, your diaphragm relaxes while your other muscles contract. This action violently pushes air out through your mouth. In much the same way, a sneeze is triggered by an irritation in the nose. The air is forced out through both the nose and the mouth. Hiccups. Hiccups are caused by involuntary movements of the diaphragm that disrupt normal breathing. When you have the hiccups, which is your secret word, your diaphragm muscles contracts, muscle contracts quickly and causes you to take quick, short breaths of air. The epiglottis causes, closes suddenly while the diaphragm is contracting. This causes the hiccup noise. Many times there is no obvious cause for hiccups. Some people may get hiccups when they are full when they eat a, or when they eat a spicy food. Strong emotions such as fear or anger can also cause them. Hiccups can be noisy or quiet, but they cannot be controlled. Snoring. A person snores whenever air cannot flow freely through the back of the mouth and the nose. The snoring sound is caused when parts of the mouth and throat vibrate and hit together. There are many reasons why a person snores. A person may have an allergy or a cold. If the wall of cartilage that separates a person's nostrils is crooked, he may snore. A person may also snore if he is overweight, sleeps on his back, or has swollen tonsils. Well, that's it. Hopefully you got the uh, secret word. You were paying close attention. Um, we will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye.